I never believed the word star. That's an illusion, man. I mean, that's something public calls you. Hello, Mr. Lee. You see, everybody come up to you as Mr. Lee. When you have long hair, they'll say, hey, man, like, that's in, man, baby. That's the in thing. But if you have no name, they'll say, boy, look at that disgusting juvenile delinquent. I mean, too many people are yes, yes, yes to you all the time. When you become successful, when you become famous, it's very, very easily to be blinded by all these happenings. Right? Because, I mean, if things are repeated too many times, you believe in it and it becomes a habit. Coming out the blackest hole Watching through my side Bringing on my head again Feel it coming down Feel it coming down like a lid now
burning is the rums are burning red inside Now I get to kill you For the benefit of man and the things you do pick Now I get to kill you You drive behind shields and force fields of blue pig Now I get to kill you and This is what I'm thinking when I'm looking up at you When you're running up on my knees You pray for these things you turn to me Wait till I get up off my knees You pray for me to go to the feet Wait till I get up off my knees You pray for these things you've done to me Wait till I get up off my knees You pray for these things you've done to me Right or wrong
of a trade you, you can see, see them Well no I never had to get cause I down with bad yeah. time I'm right if it makes the blood spill 24 7 you lie to me hard for me to try to break my integrity Just because you're afraid you know I got a bet And you know I won't ever fade Well no I never had a gun
the work, so we passed on that bad beat. Living in the past, it won't last, let me tell you. Just break it down, you're a crud and that's a sad truth.
now we can sleep in peace sleep in peace sleep in peace sleep in peace you guys want to do Sammy? Stop! 
so we call up to like to rearrange your cause If only one, make it a check under your hood When you don't wanna check it, because you know it's not that good Step up with your friends, the train We're gonna take it, make it a check to make it You're not happy yet, my friend is done a ton You know I'm making a mess, pretty soon we're gonna uh, punish uh, it Cause I'm uh, on it, I'm bad Oh
Gotta see what it's about me for it's all down the line A lot of people got to just do each other wrong Now this is what you do to it gets back to you in a fold of two So get to train in love and life is what we gotta do When I said it is this and someone told us we gotta stick a knife In the back of the man who we been here it's all bad smack What you gotta do is jump up and shake your body down Cause what's that day to shake up you need to fucking down Let me know when something fucked up when I'm saying this shit I try to incorporate the good vibe and still be with it And if you think it's such and it's fine But at least tell me why Cause about the last thing I do is start a stupid fight There was a kid I knew once and thought that he was tough Started by your reason just so we could show off the stuff But the good it didn't just get where he had ended up In a fucking cell with some guy But then he did his butt I like to start off my night of fun And yo ho ho and a bottle of whiskey You punks who try uh, to tell me what's uh, you really uh, piss me sweat. off Then when I cough at the pub and some endo I think of all the fun that y'all have playing Nintendo. Nintendo Cause looking down on people for the beliefs is all you do You'll end up with two last friends Mario and you and why should you give a damn About why I drink with you I mean if I was sober I wouldn't give a fuck about what you do Unless it's preaching Well today I'm doing some teaching So don't constrain your brain And maybe you'll learn to reach in deep To your soul find it and set it free Cause a lot of people out there think the same as me There's only one thing people should preach about And that's their God And I don't see no Bible on you So just send your mind abroad Trying to be cool, even though you know I don't play. But if you 
say shit to me, I relate what I say in this way. Yo ho ho, and a bottle of tequila. There's only one thing that I hate more than a squealer, and that's a preacher. You know I really on a beat you, saying shit about me, and I didn't ever meet you. Here's a feature about me that you probably don't know, 'cause I don't blow cracker tobacco with the rack of only smoke until there's only two things that I'll hit: a nice tight track and a bitch preaching shit, and I won't quit. And especially not 'cause you say, 'cause you probably haven't tried it, don't know what it's like anyway. I don't hate you just because you got the edge. I only hate you if only to that X you pledge. Just 'cause you're straight don't mean you can't be my friend. But this preaching shit has gotta come to an end. 'Cause I break beat for my fans. Preacher, preacher, get the fuck out my face. Get the fuck out, get the fuck out, get the fuck out. We're not the overlord to a human race. But the human race, but the human race. Preacher, preacher, get the fuck out my face. Make sure you respect to this music, no matter for what band you play. Yo ho ho, and a bottle of Tango Bread. Make sure you respect to this music, no matter for what band you play. Ha! Yo ho ho, and a bottle of Tango Bread. Make sure you respect to this music, no matter for what band you play. Heavy Metal Part Two. June 17, 1998. I'm feeling pretty metal right about here because I spent my day with those truly evil deities of destruction known as Slayer. <laughs> my buddy Skimpy Ratnats woke me up around noon, giving me the instructions of the day. Dude, be at my house by 1:30 so I get it on the train, dude. Dude. Dude, we gotta see Slayer, dude. Dude, you have to get up. We have to rock. It's Slayer, dude. Uh, affirmative. I caught into the phone, but my boy's still not ready to face the day. Slayer, we're to be signing autographs. The Newbury Comics in Braintree. I had the day off. Scoopy was ready to rock, and with flying V-shaped guitars dancing in my head, I quickly showered and downed coffee. Like the sickly angst-driven hardcore metal kid that I had become, I used Slayer's new album, Diablos in Musica, which translates to Death in Music, to power my morning rituals like an overloaded electric generator on PCP. In my humble opinion, the new Slayer album was a testament to the true forces of metal. Four dudes who had seen it all as far as metal was concerned <laughs> had rocked out to a slower, more chug-sounding compendium of aggression, resembling a demon caught gurgling mouthwash in a highway rest stop. The savage attitudes of Slayer pushed me out the door and onto Ratnitz's home, merely two blocks away. <laughs> 
Once Skimpy and I were ready, the two of us walked down to the train, excited like ten-year-olds at the gates of Disney World. And after an hour-long train ride and a brief stint in a cab with a repeatedly pierced young lad in an Ozfest t-shirt named Julio, Ratnuts and I found ourselves standing in line with the elite youth of the South Shore metal scene. <laughs> Denim everywhere. Mullets, work boots, and black concert t-shirts swarmed the sidewalk of the Newbury Comic Strip Mall like war generals meeting for council. Conversations like, dude, did you hear what happened to Dave, dude? Got his ass kicked by skinheads, dude. Dude, see my new Camaro, dude? <laughs> Kicks ass, dude. He's got a 442, a fuel injection and shit, dude. <laughs> Slayer! Invaded my ears like a blitz in a touch football game, gone awry under the evil tyranny of a Black Sabbath record. Some crusty punk kids with neurosis and nausea patches, cruelly sewn to their dirty sweatshirts, came to join the line. Although their patience was next to nil, for they retreated, and upon reaching a safe parking lot distance from the metal kids, they screamed back, PUNK FUCKING ROCK! while walking to their suburban homes with white picket fences and home-cooked meals for a mom and all the metal kids stunned that someone would fuck with them in such large numbers had nothing more to retort than... faggots. <laughs> a smattering of snickers, claps, and devil horn signs made with hands immediately followed by the bystanders in line. Slayer finally arrived and commenced an assembly line of autograph signing. Children of metal would exit the store once their posters and CDs were signed, were signed as if excited, as if victorious from a battle scene in the movie Braveheart with both arms raised, and they would growl as fast and as hard as long as they could. Slayer! Harry <laughs> King, the guitar player, would take the first CD, scribble his signature, and then pass to Jeff Hannah Chanman, guitarist. Then, Paul Bostaff, drummer. And last, Tom Araya, bass player, lead, vocals. <laughs> Tom was the coolest. Not that the other members weren't cool, but as we approached Tom, he just greeted us with a, hey dudes, that blew Skippy and I away. <laughs> we gave the band copies of our CD, and Tom laughed at the title saying, on tour without a band, <laughs> spoken word man, that's fucking cool. Tom Araya liked the title of RCD. How cool was that? Andre showed up and had some things signed, including his hairy gut. Ooh. Ratnuts and I went over to the Dunkin' Donuts once we had our record signed. Full-on darkness infected every word which spewed from our mouths. Dude, we just met Slayer. Dude, Tom Araya liked the title of RCD and laughed. Dude, Tom Araya said, hey dude, to us. Dude, I, I, I'm losing my shit. Ratnuts would expound as I made air guitar gestures and distortion sounds while screaming, Angel of Death! <laughs> Skimpy Ratnuts asked the two girls working the counter at Dunkin' Donuts if they were going to cut out for a bit and see Slayer. Uh, no, one replied. I, I don't know who he is. I don't know who he is? Skimpy and I thought, what the hell was that? Slayer wasn't a he, but instead a they. Get the pronouns straight. Nevertheless, we drove back to Boston with Andre, making a quick stop at the illustrious South Shore Plaza for some gourmet delight at the food court. <laughs> Later, I find myself at the Slayer show. Surrounded by white trash metal kids like ants to a naked pile of strawberry jam. It was wall-to-wall -wall Slayer t-shirts, heavy metal bandanas, and dirty long hair. Every once in a while, a chorus of growls and hollers would erupt shouting, Fuck it, Slayer! <laughs> the dim light and ever-present odor of cheap beer somehow made it feel like home. It reminded me of all those kids in Northbridge, Massachusetts, with fringe leather jackets and cowboy boots, wasting their days away in Cumberland Farms parking lots. You know, in a way, it was kind of beautiful. <laughs> The first band, System of a Down, played a short set of angst-ridden, yet strangely high-pitched music with strict time changes. It reminded me as if Satan himself had taken too much speed and just freaked out with paranoia. <laughs> 
Clutch came up next. The boys from Baltimore were back and spreading their wisdom of car engines, space, and usual redneck philosophies. <laughs> Hell awaiting, the dudes in my band, Michael Kennedy and I, sat anxious with anticipation. Eleven o'clock struck, the lights went down, and the crowd began to chant repeatedly, Slayer, 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 like drones reciting the Pledge of Allegiance in elementary school, yet way fucking cooler. <laughs> Slayer opened up with syncopated red stage lights, evil guitar power chord, and cymbal splash. <laughs> Hell Awaits was the first song, a lively little ditty about burning your flesh off. The place exploded in a storm of bodies swinging and smashing everything in sight as if hell itself had risen from its fiery depths and invaded the club. Slayer rocked an approximate hour and a half set with all the classic anthems. South of Heaven. War and Semble. Dead Skin Mask. Rain in Blood. And obviously, Angel of Death. Songs of war, genocide, hell, fire, and death were mutually enjoyed amongst the crowd. In my opinion, Slayer doesn't advocate these practices, but rather critiques and comments on the destruction of the human race, i.e. all the evils that the humans have committed to one another. All the murder, rape, and annihilation we know to disgust and loathe is the same evil that's buried within us all. Together, we and Slayer both know that these practices are atrocious and horrible, and I don't think Slayer glorifies any of it. Instead, they create the most aggressive music possible to illustrate these tortures. <laughs> Aggression, that's what it comes down to. See, we've all wanted to rip someone to shreds in our lives, and Slayer just says, dude, that's cool. <laughs> Instead of, like, chopping your girlfriend to pieces, why not just spend the eight bucks on a cassette copy of our album, Haunting the Chapel, and rock out to us screaming about it? Okay, dude? It's cool. We know how you feel. Slayer is the cheapest therapist you'll ever find. So they finished the set with Angel of Death, and the house lights came on. I purchased a t-shirt with a big red devil on the front and began to walk home. The mist in the air of a warm summer night in Boston cooled me down to a level where I could actually sleep. And that I did, next to my autographed copy of Divine Intervention. <laughs>